Well, hello and welcome to uh, tutorial 28 in this series of tutorials designed to help you learn TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of the uh, markplex.com email mailing list, then please join and I'll be happy to send you an email when I create new tutorials and such. Uh, you can go there at markplex.com and sign up for the email mailing list. So in this particular tutorial we're going to be looking at Intrabar Persist which can be a little confusing uh, but what, what I've done here is created a little program and uh, it buys and sells on the same bar and we're just going to uh, set a variable equal to market position and do a few things with that just to demonstrate Intrabar Persist. So let me just go through the program and explain the settings. Um, got four variables here, MP last MP count and tick count and they're all being set up as intrabar persist and initialized to zero. Then what we're doing on this particular date is we're counting ticks. So we're going to increment the tick count variable by one every tick on the 10th of August 2009. So we're setting last MP equals to MP and then uh, the next thing we do is we set MP equals to be market position and market position is a trade station function which is equal to 1 when we're long, minus 1 when we're short and hit 0 when we're flat. And then on a particular time and date, and I've worked this out so that we get into, we go long and short, um, there's no, no magic here, I just look through the chart. And uh, at that particular time we're going to buy at a stop value and we're going to sell short at a, another stop value and then we're going to print uh, so that we can see what the values of our variables are on every tick as we go through uh, this particular strategy on this particular chart and I'll explain the chart settings and strategy settings in a minute but we're going to print the date, the time, the value of MP, the value of last MP, the count, the close value and the tick count and then what we're saying here is if MP is not equal to last MP then we're going to increment the count by one that's going to tell us that we've gone long, then we've gone short. It's going to end up as being equal to two. So let's just have a look at the chart. Let me just explain the chart settings. So here you go. Uh, if we go format, strategies, a couple of things here to know. On format, we've set this up as enable intrabar order generation and calculation. If that didn't occur, then it would just happen literally on the next bar. We want it to happen within the bar. And we've got it limit orders, same signal in this strategy to once per bar, which works for us here and then importantly we've got properties for all we're using look inside bar backtesting and we're setting that at a tick level just so that the program goes through every uh, tick of the bar so let's close that let's go to the program I'm going to verify it by pressing F3 Okay, and then in a few seconds we're going to start seeing the values appearing here. So I'm just going to move this so we can see the print statement a little more clearly. We're just going to go to the top of the print statement and you'll see here that initially uh, obviously we're flat uh, but then after four ticks we go long and MP equals one. The last MP is still zero because if you remember that is set as we go around the tick cycle again so on the next one they're equal but because they're different here we increment count by one and then as we go down we'll see that at some point MP becomes minus one again last MP lags by by one tick and then because the two are different then count is incremented to two so that's doing what we expected it to do but let's just go and change the program a little bit here. I'm just going to clear this so we don't get confused. And we're going to change MP to not be an intrabar persist anymore. So I'm just going to delete intrabar persist there. And let's just uh, press F3 and see what happens. So we go to the very top as we did before. And you'll see now that while MP is being updated to the actual market position, last MP is equal to zero. And I think the easiest way of thinking about this is um, in if you do not have intrabar persist uh, set up for a variable, then that variable will literally forget what it was as it went around the last tick, calc tick calculation and will be equal to what MP was um, on the last bar. So on the last bar, MP was equal to zero, so last MP 
is always equal to zero. It's only showing up as one here because we're actually refreshing it within the tick, using it as uh, setting this up as MP equals market position. And then to make matters worse, because count uh, MP and last MP are wrong, the count just goes up and up and up and up. Now just to uh, just to demonstrate that a little bit more, what we could do is actually uncomment. Let's just clear this again and uncomment this statement here. And this is going to go short. So this is going to go short before the bar where we're running the program. And what we're going to find now is that last MP is actually going to be equal to minus one because in the previous bar, MP was equal to uh, minus one. So I'm just going to press F3 to verify that. And indeed, you'll see here last MP is equal to minus one go all the way to the top it's minus one all the way through so let's just comment that out and another thing we could do just to just to demonstrate it perhaps a little bit even more uh, well let's just uh, it's going to clear this and just verify the program just to go back to where we were a second ago and again last MP is equal to zero and we could say, OK, if tick count is equal to this, then we're not going to update MP. And then you'll see that MP will actually be zero there because it's that itself will go back to what it was the previous bar. So let's just put in a statement here. If tick count is not equal to that, then oops. OK, if tick count is not equal to this tick value here, then MP3 is equal to the market position. So I'm just going to clear that and press F3. And then if we just go to the top of this print statement, we'll see here that MP is set correctly. Apart from for this one tick, we said don't, don't update it for this one tick. And so MP itself goes back to what MP was the previous bar. So um, I think that uh, hopefully explains a little bit more about uh, why we need intrabar persist, uh, particularly if we're doing things within bars like we're doing here. Uh, otherwise, the value is forgotten between ticks. And just to reiterate, the way I like to think about it is that if, um, if you do not have it set, then the, the calculation will happen for a particular tick. But when it goes around again, when it iterates, when the program iterates again, it forgot what that variable value was the previous tick. It goes back to what the variable value was the previous bar. Um, so anyway, I hope that is uh, useful. And uh, please, again, if you're not part of the markplex.com email mailing list, then please join at markplex.com. Thank you very much for your attention.